Hey, how you doing? Today we're going to take a quick look at The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves and starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, and Paul Dano. Many high-profile targets in Gotham City are being picked off one by one by the homicidal maniac known as the Riddler. And it's up to Bruce Wayne, aka the Batman, aka Vengeance, to stop them along with James Gordon, the only good cop in the city, Selina Kyle, everyone's favorite anti-hero, and a few less savory characters. Along the way, Bruce learns a few things about himself and his family history and starts to wonder if he's really the hero the city needs. I was a little wary going into this movie because I heard the runtime was about three hours and... Can a movie about the Batman, something that we've seen a ton of times before, really hold my interest for that long? Well, it turns out the answer is yes. This turned out to be really good, and Reeves managed to do some things with the Batman that we haven't really seen on the big screen before, though we have seen them in other media. One of the big themes here is Batman figuring out exactly what type of hero he wants and needs to be. And indeed, is he really the hero? Is he actually the good guy here, or is he just arguably less bad? And this is made clear right off the bat when Batman saves a guy who's about to get mugged by a group of thugs, and after beating the thugs senseless, the guy he just saved is still terrified of him, and... Really, he's right to be. I mean, this huge bastard in a bat costume just snuck out of the shadows and single-handedly beat up five or six guys. I'd be pissing myself too. Bruce also learns a little bit about his family history and discovers his parents may not have been quite as good and upstanding as he thought they were. Or at least that's what some people in Gotham's underworld have been telling him. But they are a bunch of criminals, so they're probably lying. Or are they? I did like what they did with the eye makeup that he wears as Batman, and after he's done Batmaning for the night and takes off the mask, he's still got the makeup on and it's all smudged and his sweat-drenched hair is hanging down in his face, and he just looks like an absolute mess, and it really shows what a toll being the Batman is taking on him. And unlike some other Batman movies, this one does not stay in the shadows the whole time. If he needs to have a word with you, he's not going to sneak up on you from behind. He's just going to break down the front door. Indeed, one of the early scenes has him just walking right into the iceberg lounge, beating up six or seven goons and being like, yo, Penguin, we need to talk. The movie is shot very well. The style and the lighting really fits the Batman character. The action sequences are great. Even the one that you may have seen bits of in the trailer where it's completely pitch black and you can only see what's going on for a few seconds at a time when the goons are firing their guns. I have seen versions of that type of action sequence in several movies, and it always looks terrible because you can never tell what the hell is going on. I think this is the only time I have actually seen it done right. Pattinson, I thought, did a great job, which isn't much of a surprise. He is a very good actor. And he is a very intimidating presence with the way he moves, the way he speaks, and the score really helps that as well. It's... The Batman theme almost sounds kind of like the funeral march. You get this sense of foreboding whenever he walks in. But while I like him as the Batman, I'm not sure I'm entirely sold on him as Bruce Wayne, which has really been a problem for most of the Batman movies. Honestly, I still don't think anyone has ever topped Keaton in that regard. And part of the problem is the movie doesn't really give him a chance to play Bruce Wayne. He's pretty much the Batman throughout, which I understand is kind of the point. I mean, one of the things the Riddler says to him is that when he puts on the mask, he's not putting on a disguise, he's showing who he really is. Speaking of, they actually have three villains in this movie, plus one anti-hero, and the movie does a pretty good job of giving them all their chance to shine without dragging everything out or feeling too crowded. They did a very good job making the Riddler look like a legitimate threat. He is creepy and clever and ruthless, and Dano did a great job bringing this character to life. And I think that's a testament to his acting, because if you look at the guy, he's not exactly intimidating, but he makes it work. Wasn't a huge fan of the costume, though. I mean, I wasn't expecting the Jim Carrey spandex, and I get that they wanted something a bit more grounded. I just think they went a little too far in that direction. We also have John Turturro as Carmine Falcone, and after re-watching the Transformers movies recently, I was really longing for him to get a much better role, something that he actually deserves, and it's nice to see him have it here. And I'm not at all surprised that he's really good at playing a mob boss. And then we have Colin Farrell as the Penguin, and I didn't even realize it was him at first. I mean, 
It doesn't look like him. It doesn't sound like him. He just completely vanished into that role. Well done, and give the makeup department all of the awards. Kravitz was pretty good as Catwoman, does a good job playing the anti-hero. Definitely not a bad person, but her moral code doesn't exactly jive with Bruce's all the time. And Circus was really good as Alfred, and that's pretty much the one constant these movies always have. Gao, Kane, uh, Irons, and now Circus, they always have a good Alfred. In case this isn't clear, I really enjoyed this, and I recommend checking it out if you have the chance. And if you don't want to go into a crowded theater, which is totally understandable, it'll be on HBO Max before too long. And technically, there is no after credit scene, though there is something after the credits. It's just a little bit of something, kind of along the lines of that bit of Michael Myers' heavy breathing at the end of Halloween. Something like that. And that's all I have to say about The Batman. Till next time, take care.